thanks everybody sorry for the technical difficulty uh i definitely made it a little difficult to, uh i'm out and about today and uh had ended up with other calls so i hope everybody's enjoyed today and had a chance to uh attend you know at least some of the things uh some of the presentations uh, unfortunately i did not but I did go over them this past weekend, and I really wanted to, you know, thank everybody. I thought there were some excellent papers in there. So, first off, I wanted to uh, thank Dr. Franco Gasparoni. If I butchered your name, sir, I'm sorry. It's a Southern thing. He's the CEO and co-founder of AdaCore. I um, want to thank Captain Margaret Wilson, the PM of NAVAIR 209. Uh, Chris Krupp, the uh, PO Aviation Introduction uh, for FACE. And Patrick Collier from Aspen Consulting for the SOSA introduction, as well as the 21 presenters who presented more in-depth uh, information on FACE, SOSA, and, and COSMOS, and MOSA. Um, hopefully, the great thing about these events, and hopefully you found that to be the case, is these events are normally open to the public. So it gives a chance for people who are unfamiliar with FACE or SOSA to find out more information. And I think the papers are a great way to actually do that. Uh, we had, you know, 15 different papers presented, uh, you know, from FACE and uh, SOSA as a whole and their benefits. And, you know, additional standards, you know, are discussed as well. And I heard the last part of the last presentation and they talked about, you know, not just the FACE standard, but you got to think about it from a holistic perspective. And one thing that I've done within PEO Aviation is I've actually driven in four standards that I told them they really need to be concentrating on. There's others, I think we'll get to them, but the four are FACE, HOST, SOSA, and VICTORY, or CMOS. So I think, you know, once we see those, people start getting it and they start understanding because now we've covered the software, the hardware, a sensor application, as, as well as the network. So the majority of the primary coverage for our aircraft on it. Uh, in a brief summary of today, Tim, you know, whether you're a member of the FACE or SOSA consortium, an academic government or industry partner, our goal was to impact valuable new open architecture information resources and contacts. 87% uh, of the presentations were by industry representatives. That critical. Uh, it, you know, as a government person, it, it's refreshing to me to see that kind of interaction by our industry partners. I think that goes a long way toward, you know, helping us get to where we need to be uh, as far as our platforms are concerned. Uh, like I said, hopefully you were able to attend these and I hope you had a few takeaways. Rapidly advancing type efforts uh, in these open standards for MOSA. Uh, the services, you know, managers and acquisition communities are engaged, you know, in to achieve what we're trying to do. It, it, it's critical for us, you know, to get buy-in from everybody uh, because we need buy-in from the industry partners to help us as well as us trying to learn and do it as well. One of the things that I always tell within our PEO is we also, we have to figure out ways to train ourselves better and faster so we understand what we're getting. And I think these kind of events actually go in and, and help that. Uh, these technical st standards, you know, that were presented, they, they give just a few of many standards available to produce that commonality of an avionics uh, environment. And, you know, and it's just a drop in the bucket uh, I mentioned the four that I've pushed within PEO Aviation. I think those are the ones that uh, I think all the services should be or could be using. And I think that's coming down the line. Uh, ooh, somebody got a phone. Um, for those who attended the Tri-Services uh, Architecture event back in late January, um, since that time, both consortium uh, have made significant strides in expanding open architecture environment to include other form factors and potential applications. I, I've actually started a program with the Air Force 
where we're trying to develop something. Uh, Ilya and I talked. We he he had the ideal. I I jumped on it. We're going to supply the face portion to it, and he's going to supply a lot of the hardware side. And you know, and I look forward to seeing that thing roll out. Uh, I think that's going to be critical uh, to show what ours. And to be a little selfish here, I hope to roll it out at a tri-services event that we're going to attempt to hold for the third time in late January. Uh, I, I'm hoping I don't get, uh, I don't still have to deal with COVID. I may, uh, if, if I do, I may throw up my hands on it. But uh, I really hope to have that rolled out. It will also be shown that the, uh, uh, the Tim, the Navy will hold next year in March. Uh, I plan on having it in our booth at that time as well. So that one is actually, you know, it will demonstrate from a hardware side and a software side, and it will show the combination, you know, between face and uh, the SOSA technical requirements. Um, one thing about today, you know, most of the papers discuss the benefits of those open standards, uh, such as software modularity, portability, interoperability, enhanced upgrade, uh, enhanced upgradability, and scalability. Uh, those are critical uh, for us. And, you know, the Pentagon has actually been pushing a lot of these things down on us. They are, you know, they've signed off the MOSA um, a policy to us. And it, the one thing we're also trying to do is we're trying to, you know, in, in inform them of what they're doing because in a lot of cases, they're wanting to mix terms. They're wanting to talk about a digital engineering environment, a MOSA environment, and then a model-based system engineering. And they want to start confusing all these. And then when you start trying to throw in the standards, they really get confused. So it's things that I'm fighting. Matter of fact, I'm actually on a telecon at, the, at this particular moment with them. Uh, where we're trying to straighten out some of that. Uh, in closing, uh, we, we've got a couple of upcoming events. I've mentioned these already. Uh, the Tri-Services event, uh, it's tentatively scheduled again for January 19th of 21. Um, it, it will be in Huntsville. I'm, you know, I'm very much looking forward to that. To follow that one up, we're going to actually have the uh, Nav Air Face and SOSA Expo in Tim again, but that will be on March 23rd of 21 uh, for the Tim portion of it. And I, I think it's valuable. And as I talked to uh, Captain Wilson and Sean and, and crew, you know, I really thought I really want to make sure that they had an opportunity to get their PMs and everybody in because I think it's it's. Those are sellable moments to the military PMs, and it gives them a chance to understand what we're trying to do. Because we can go in and talk about it a lot, but until we can actually show it to them, and when they see it, it it's amazing how much it clicks. Uh, when I hosted the one two years ago, the, you know, General Todd was very impressed, and he wanted to know when I could do another one. So, and that's, it, it really catapulted us to start driving things down. And we need that buy-in from all three services. And I think the tri-services uh, thing that the Navy came up with was a great concept. Uh, I thought they did an excellent job, you know, this past year. Um, and and I, I really look forward to hosting it again. So, and then the last one will be an Army Chem, uh September 14th of 2021. And hosted also in Huntsville. Um, it's it's going to be another one of those cases where I try to build each time that we do a TIM. Uh, I try to build something new. I try to show it, how it will fit into our platforms because when our PMs walk through, I want them to understand how it could affect their aircraft. And I believe that becomes the biggest selling point in all the talking I could ever do. So. And for the ones that have been around me, you know I'm not a loss for words very many times, but they really help, you know, when they, they get a chance to see it. And uh, I, I'm going to do what I've tried to do in the past, and that's going to try to get uh, General Barry to make it a duty station for the day to see if I can't get even more of their people there at, at that event. So uh, that's pretty much I have. 
I hope everybody enjoyed this Tim. I'm hoping COVID will hurry up and go away so we can all see each other face to face again. Um, I, I think, you know, I wish the SOSA court consortium um, much luck this week with their meetings and kicking off. I, I'm sure it will be a success just as our face one was last week. Uh, I heard a lot of positive feedback and I think, you know, this Tim Expo part today was just, you know, an, an accumulation of my face event last week. So uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, please, uh, Reggie or somebody, please read them back to me. Does the, uh, yeah, there is one here. Um, does Space Consortium have plans to open itself for non-U.S. participants? <laughs> we, we are looking at it. Uh, my goal is, as I've mentioned to the open group board of directors, uh, I'm resetting communications with the State Department uh, until I can get their buy off. You know, I've got to hold off and, and you know, not allow them in at the moment. We're trying to actively act, uh, act like we have foreign nationals to show that it won't be a problem. And, I, you know, I, I think it's just, trying to get a hold of the right personnel at the State Department to get that uh, accomplished. But it is every bit of my goal to remove ITAR off of our documentation and to open it up for international participation. There's another question, Joe. Um, will the January Army TSOA ID in March now via face Tim be hybrid, hosted virtually as well as in person? Joe, um, if I may interject, for, forgive me, this is Sally Bixby with NAVAIR PMA 209. Um, Joe, uh, let me field that uh, answer if you don't mind. Sure. Oh, very good. Uh, uh, circling back, Reggie, you shared the question on March, the NAVAIR uh, TIM that's going to be happening at the Holiday Inn on March 23rd. That at this time will not be a hybrid event. That will be a live event only. And we're certainly hoping that COVID-19 will uh, allow us to do so, that certainly travel restrictions will be lifted enough again for us to be face-to-face. -face. Um, Joe, in speaking with yourself and Alicia, I do understand that uh, if, in fact, your January TSOA ID event in Huntsville is able to take place, it is likely going under that same plan. In other words, it will be a live event. I don't believe, Joe, that you are entertaining doing that virtually. Is that correct for January? No, that, that is absolutely correct. I have no interest in doing that kind of an event uh, virtually. Uh, I, I want people to actually be able to see it. I want be able to people to lay their hands on it and be able to ask the people questions. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. And we at we at uh, Navair feel the exact same way and are very excited and very hopeful that March is going to come off live. So. Um, uh, that said, Reggie, uh, I'll let you close it, but I did just uh, want to say one thing further, and that is, as, as Joe said, and echoing uh, to Mr. Gasparoni, Captain Wilson, Joe yourself, and to the exceptional events uh, team at the Open Group and all of the Open Group membership of SOSA and FACE, uh, NAVAIR is very grateful for everyone's participation, and I just wanted to, uh, as I say, a, a final moment from myself uh, to thank you very deeply for all of your efforts for this particular TIM and in our future events together. And with that, Reggie, ma'am, I turn it over to you. Joe, sir, thank you very much. Reggie, all yours. Thanks, Sally.